disaccharides. Disaccharides are sugars made up of two molecules of monosaccharides. In fact, disaccharides are considered to be complex sugars. Disaccharides are considered to be complex sugars in the sense that they are formed from a combination of two monosaccharides. One monosaccharide plus another monosaccharide produce one disaccharide through the process of condensation. In the process of condensation, water is also lost. Water molecule is lost as a result of the condensation process. So why condensation? Because you are having two molecules of monosaccharides being condensed into one molecule of disaccharide with the loss of a smaller water molecule. So we can represent this using symbols. We have this is structure here representing one monosaccharide plus another monosaccharide then they are condensed into one disaccharide the two monosaccharides in the disaccharides are held together by the glycosidic bond and here is a water molecule that is lost so for this bond to be formed a water molecule must be lost in the process so chemically this is a chemical formula of one monosaccharide and specifically we are using the hexose. This is a hexose sugar plus another hexose sugar to produce one disaccharide with the loss of a water molecule. Now the type of disaccharide depends on the nature of monosaccharides that go into condensation. Now there are three common disaccharides in nature. These are one, you have maltose sugar, which is formed from the condensation of two glucose molecules. So the result of the condensation is a maltose and a water molecule. Maltose is an intermediate product that is found either in the breakdown of starch to maltose then eventually glucose during digestion of food along the alimentary canal or during the breakdown of starch in a germinating seed it also forms an intermediate product during the synthesis of starch from monosaccharides during seed development. So maltose is more of an intermediate product rather than the final product in, uh, in, in living cells. The second type of disaccharide is sucrose, which is formed from the condensation of one glucose and one fructose. Remember the fructose is the fruit and vegetable monosaccharide. So the two combined form sucrose molecule with a loss of a water molecule. Sucrose is also known as the cane sugar and is found in fruits and vegetables. The third type of disaccharide is lactose, also known as the milk sugar because it is formed from the condensation of a glucose molecule and the milk monosaccharide galactose to give lactose and water. Properties of disaccharide are very similar to those of monosaccharides because they are both sugars, only that disaccharides are complex. They are regarded to be complex sugars because their molecule is a compound of two smaller monosaccharides. Now the first property is the solubility. Disaccharides are soluble in water. They are soluble in water. In fact, compared to monosaccharides, disaccharides are about three times more soluble in water. 
two, just like monosaccharides, they are sweet tasting. Hence the term sugar. So in terms of taste, they just are sweet as the monosaccharides. Three, they are crystallizable. That is, they can be dried into crystals. And four, maltose and lactose are reducing sugars, meaning that when heated with Benedict's reagent, they will change the blue color of copper to sulfate to the orange or brown color of copper one oxide. In other words, they reduce the copper from oxidation number two to one. Hence, they're reducing agents just like the monosaccharides. However, sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. That is, if heated with Benedict's reagent, there will be no color change from blue. Because unlike maltose and lactose, sucrose does not react with Benedict's reagent. Now, the fifth property is that... Uh, Disaccharides can be easily broken down into their constituent monosaccharides in a process known as hydrolysis. The term hydrolysis simply means splitting using water. For example, sucrose can be hydrolyzed into its constituent glucose and fractals in two ways. Under natural conditions, in the alimentary canal or in living cells, enzymes catalyze the breakdown of sucrose into its constituent monosaccharides. In the laboratory, we can hydrolyze sucrose by adding dilute hydrochloric acid and then heating. Once you do that, then Dilute hydrochloric acid acts as a catalyst and the sucrose molecule is then split into glucose and fractals. So chemically, using symbols, you can represent the splitting. This manner here, this is a disaccharide, but it can be sucrose, it can be lactose, it can be maltose. It's hydrolyzed either using hydrochloric acid in the laboratory or using enzymes into the constituent monosaccharides. Now, functions of disaccharides. Disaccharides would be hydrolyzed by enzymes in living cells to yield the constituent monosaccharides. So if it is maltose, it is broken down into glucose. If it is sucrose, it's broken down into glucose and fructose, while lactose is broken down into glucose and galactose. Now, fructose and galactose are then converted into glucose. Glucose is the main respiratory substrate that is oxidized to release energy. So once the disaccharides have been hydrolyzed into their constituent monosaccharides, then glucose is oxidized release energy. The other monosaccharides are converted into glucose first before they are hydrolyzed to release energy. Now the second function, and this in particular refers to sucrose, is that uh, sucrose is used, sucrose, is, sucrose is used to transport, is used as a transport carbohydrate. Given that it is chemically stable, and it being soluble in water, it is the transport carbohydrate during translocation in plants from the site of synthesis, that is the leaves, to the rest of the plant. So the main transport carbohydrate in flowering plants is sucrose. Now turning to polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are long complex molecules that are made up of many monosaccharides molecules that are linked together 
through condensation. So polysaccharides are large molecules and they have this general formula in which N is a very large number usually between 200 and 500. So a polysaccharide is a very long chain of monosaccharides joined together through condensation. So this represents a short chain here. We have a short chain of a polysaccharide and these are the individual monosaccharides and the commonest monosaccharides in most of the polysaccharides are glucose molecules. Because of their reactivity, they easily combine to form long polysaccharide chains. And just like in disaccharide, the bond between one monosaccharide molecule and the next one is known as glycosidic bond. So along the polysaccharide chain, there are glycosidic bonds that hold the monosaccharide molecules uh, together. Properties of polysaccharides. Now the properties are quite different from those of monosaccharides and disaccharides. Because in chemistry you know that when two substances combine to form a third substance, then the third substance usually have different chemical properties from either of the constituents. Polysaccharides, unlike monosaccharides and disaccharides, are insoluble in water. Being insoluble in water, that means that they do not affect osmotic pressure of the cells. Hence, they are said to be osmotically inactive. Two, they are not sweet to test. Unlike the sugars, polysaccharides are not sweet at all. And three, being chemically inactive, they are non-reducing, non-reducing complex sugars. Now we can use the word complex sugar, particularly the sugar in quotes, because they're not really sugars, because we normally associate the word sugar with something that is sweet testing. Now these are not sweet testing, they are non-reducing, and also they are chemically inactive. Now this fourth property makes them ideal for their functions. Being chemically inactive, alongside being insoluble in water, suits them to their functions. Now functions of polysaccharides depends on the type of polysaccharide. There are two main categories of polysaccharides. One, we have storage carbohydrates. Storage carbohydrates are polysaccharides, and there are two types depending on the type of cell. Starch is a polysaccharide that is found in plant cells. So starch is the storage carbohydrate in plant cells. While in animal cells, these are slightly different types of polysaccharide known as glycogen. Glycogen is found in animal cells and in mammals, glycogen is abundant in the liver cells and muscle cells. These are the cells that use energy a lot and they tend to have reserves of glycogen. Then the second category of polysaccharides are the structural types. They make up the structural carbohydrate. The examples here are one, cellulose. Cellulose is composed of long and branched chains of glucose units. It is the main structural component of plant cell walls where it provides rigidity and also maintains the shape of the cell. Another structural carbohydrate is chitin. Chitin is a polysaccharide made up of long chains of glucose 
that are linked with nitrogen. So unlike cellulose, the long chains of polysaccharides are linked with nitrogen compound to form bundles of long parallel chains, just like cellulose. But here, because of the presence of nitrogen, cheating is structurally and also chemically different from cellulose. Cellulose just consists of long parallel chains of polysaccharide chains, but chitin also consists of long chains of polysaccharide chains, but which are linked with nitrogen compounds. So chitin is not purely carbohydrate because of the presence of nitrogen. It has been impregnated or strengthened with the presence of nitrogen compounds.